It's the opposition view. No Phil this week. I'm filling in for Phil. Ollie K. And I'll be joined a bit later by Chris from Albion Analytics. And we'll be getting his thoughts about West Brom season so far. And a little bit about Luton Town and how he perceives Luton Town ahead of the Friday night clash under the lights. Now, look, we've had a pretty tough week. It's been a great performance, followed by a good performance and a loss, and then a decent first half and complete capitulation in the second half. And we go back to Kenilworth Road under the lights and face a team who aren't in the greatest of form, but still carry threat right now. And who knows what will happen we all have to be behind the team, but let's hear a little bit more from Chris from Albion Analytics. So, as promised, here is Chris from Albion Analysis. How are you getting on this evening, Chris? Uh, yeah, I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. It's a uh, it's a midweek without Albion being able to ruin it, so it's uh, <laughs> you know uh, it's a, it's quite a, quite a nice, quiet, peaceful one, if truth be told. Wow, such cheek ruin it you're fifth in the table yes the last five haven't been the greatest of results but like looking on the positives you're you're unbeaten in four yes it hasn't been vintage uh, yeah unbeaten in four haven't, haven't won in six actually you 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 did us a game more credit than we deserved actually there <laughs> it's not bad it's it's not bad you know uh in in your last five yes you lost to middlesbrough and I imagine with Middlesbrough, as they are at the moment, they need about 100 chances just to score a goal. Although they should have beaten Norwich, but that's neither here nor there. And then your last four, you've had Millwall, Oxford, Blackburn and Cardiff. And those are actually four quite tricky games. But we, we were talking before we started rolling that you felt you should have got something out of the Cardiff game. Oh, we definitely should have beaten Cardiff. I mean, we we missed we we missed so many sitters. I mean, you've only got you've only got to look at our, that our XG overall. I think we're uh, one point six to one point eight, depending on which provider you look at. Um, we we created some big big chances. Darnell Furlong's missed a sitter from a, from a free kick. Um, one that doesn't go down as a particularly high value chance because the goalkeeper was right on top of him, but like we we nick the ball from them playing out from the back and John Swift, he lets the ball roll across his body. Now he's either got to go round the goalkeeper, or he's got to take it early, and the one thing he 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 doesn't do he he can't do is just let the goalkeeper be on top of him when he shoots. So it goes down as a low value chance, but really it's a sitter. We in that first half we 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 had so many chances. They hit the top of the bar, but that was really about it for them. They didn't have a shot on target all game, and it was a. It was not a particularly great second half, but I mean, you you, you went in at half time thinking, how on earth have we not scored here? But that's 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 us a little bit at the moment. I mean, don't get me wrong, we're not creating we're not creating loads and loads in games. But Middlesbrough first half, we had we had we had quite a few chances. Jed Wallace had a couple of really really presentable opportunities away at Blackburn. Both fullbacks had uh, had one-on-ones with the goalkeeper uh, and Hegem and Furlong have both put their chances wide. Um, you know, we, in the last minute of the first half there, we've had we've had a ball flash across the, 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 uh, the, the six-yard box with everybody throwing themselves at it. it, it the, the funny thing is everything, well, a lot of what we hit early season, um, although we were creating chances and probably could have scored more goals against the likes of Plymouth and Swansea but certainly against QPR like it seemed like everything we hit went in the in the back of the net we scored two really good goals against Stoke against Pompey we just had one of those days where everything went in and I don't know it's football's funny isn't it you 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 almost you almost feel like um and and I'm sure because I've seen a bit of you guys I'm sure Elijah Adebayo has felt like this in recent weeks you just have those those runs where nothing goes in for you. Yeah, well, he's got two and two now, uh, and uh, him and Morris are both up and running. Um, like Morris with four goals, Elijah with two goals. So honestly, I I do think it's the turning point for them. But for for from a Luton perspective, it is a case of 
not being so leaky at the back, but also supplying the attackers with the opportunities to actually score, which we have struggled with a little bit. But I want to talk more about West Brom because I'm in awe of your manager, Carlos Corbran. He's had Luton's number since back when he was with Huddersfield. Yeah, and he, he, he turned you over in the playoffs, didn't he? He did. He did. He knows yeah. exactly. But that was Nathan Jones's, um, Nathan Jones's uh, Luton Town. So um, I don't really know how it's going to go with Rob Edwards, although there was that game last season where we were leading 2-0 mm. and West Brom turned it around. So I am coming into this game dreading it. We haven't got Daryl DK this time, if that's any help. Uh, no, but you do it... have Josh Madger. And yeah. I will talk about Josh Madger a bit later because what Carlos Corbrand's done for him is tremendous. It, it is. Uh, although although what I would uh, what I would say is I, I think uh, I've noticed Sky uh, in particular like to make something of this uh, uh, kind of going on about... Um, you know, uh, oh, uh, Josh Mazur, he he hadn't uh, he hadn't scored um, any goals. Uh, I mean, what was it? What was their, what's their numbers that they like to that like to kick around for uh, for last season? They're they're absolutely ridiculous. I mean, they 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 they're saying they're saying stuff like, um, oh, he played twelve games last season and he only scored one goal and he scored seven in twelve this season. Yeah, but he played 198 minutes in those 12 games last season. He's played 1,008 minutes this, in 12 games this season. It's not re- it's not really comparable. Um, by the way, that's not putting down the seven goals he scored. What I'm saying is his one in 12 wasn't what people make it out to be last season because it wasn't one in 12. It was actually more like one in two and a little bit. Of games because it, you take the, take 198 minutes as 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 periods of 90, 90 minutes. It's two games in eighteen minutes. Now, to, the one goal in two games in eighteen minutes actually isn't a bad return. So, I, I don't think I don't think he's necessarily transformed the player. I think the player was always there, and when he was fit last season, he looked good. He was brilliant at Bristol City when he came on, and then he gets crunched in the last minute, and he's out for six weeks. And then he started really well away at Sunderland. And then Dan Ballard, who is not the most popular person down at the Hawthorns, and I'm sure will get roundly booed this uh, this this season again, and I encourage that behaviour, um, uh, went straight through the back of him with a disgustingly cynical challenge. So, I, I, I yeah, I, I don't... I, I do give, you know, I give Carlos a world of credit for certain things. I mean, for example, the transformation in Carl and Grant this season, I don't think anybody saw coming. I don't give him that much credit for uh, for for the player that Josh Mazur is because I think that was always the player Josh Mazur was. He scored 16 goals for um, for Bordeaux the last time he had a full season of playing. So the- that that's the French league though, isn't it? Mm, you know. Yeah, I'd, I'd uh, score 16 goals in that. It's the French second division as well. It is. Oh, there saying, you go. But, They're but, in the fourth division now, aren't they? Andy well, Carroll's yeah, because they had to them. fold and uh, and come back. Mm. They've got Andy Carroll up front, which is a bit bizarre. Another ex Albion striker, but um, no. I mean, look, I, credit credit where it's due. I don't think I don't think I don't think League Deux is that much worse than it's it's a bit worse than the Championship, but I don't think it's horrendously worse than the than the Championship. And I think uh, I, I think the point is with Josh Mazur. You look at where it, where when he's had real, real consistent runs of games, and you look at fifteen goals for Sunderland in 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 League One. You look at sixteen goals for Bordeaux in League Two, and now he's getting regular football. And you've got he's he's, he's scored seven in twelve for us. The bloke's just a quality footballer. Um, but Carlos Corbran is a class manager, and as I say, when when you when you look at how Carl and Grant has come back from Cardiff and looked a completely different animal. Now that's that's the one where I say Carlos has transformed a player. I don't think he's transformed Josh Major. I just think Josh Major was always quality. He was just injured last season. He's a he he is a tremendous coach just tactically as well. So a bit about how you set up. So from what I can tell, it's a four two three one, but you have Hegem, what a player he is, by the way, and Furlong who's a very busy player with a hell of a throw on him, just bombing up. And they get into the tight positions. Then you have Johnston and 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 Dean Garner, who as well, Dean Garner, oh my God, he 
he he was instrumental in a turnaround at Kenilworth Road a couple of years ago uh, under Slavin Bilic. Um, and they sort of go a bit narrow. How does it? How are no, you going to set I, up? I mean, for, well, first of all, I, 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 given the injury problems we've got at centre half, I don't expect Hegem to play left back. I think he will have to play centre back because we haven't got any fit centre backs. Um, we had uh, Carl Bartley got injured in the build up to in the in the week before the Cardiff game. We've now found out he's out for four to six weeks, um, and. Um, Paddy McNair pulled his hamstring inside about two minutes and had to come off. And then late in the game, Shemi Ajayi went down and had to go off as well. So the two centre-halves... That's started wonderful the game news. With... That's wonderful. <laughs> well, there you go. I'm, I'm uh, literally rubbing my hands right now. I, I, I mean, look, there's, there's definitely an opportunity <laughs> to get us. And, and it worries me with the height that you've got that, um, that you know, if... If Hegem has to move inside, that's a bit less height in there. If Holgate has to start as the centre half again, it's a bit less height in there. I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I, I think at the moment, I think probably the most likely back four is probably Furlong, Holgate, Hegem, Callum Styles, because he doesn't seem to love for a botter, and he's the only other fit defender that we've got, as far as I'm aware, unless. Unless Ajayi really, or Ajayi or McNair manages to make some sort of a magical comeback um, this week, but it looked like it looked like a hamstring ping from from McNair, and you don't you don't come back from that in a week. Um, no, not at his age. Well, I mean, not, well, not at 30? any age. Yeah, I don't think he's that. I don't think he's that old. Actually, I think uh, I, uh, I think he's I think he might still be uh, still be late twenties, um, but. Uh, 29 yeah 29, well, that, that surprises go. me i saw visualize him playing next to johnny evans in in the man united side like many many years ago well this is <laughs> it but uh, no I, th- I think he's um i think he's just been around a lot um and that's ultimately it with him but no i think i think in terms of in terms of what um you can expect from albion i think it depends what the back four is because heckham he does get forward a little bit, um, but not as much as Furlong. And he tended to invert and us go into a bit of a three cent halves, and and that allowed Furlong to come in field a little bit. The width comes from the comes from the two wide men, and but if if it's Styles at left back, he's not great defensively from what I've seen, but he's good going forward. Um, so I would expect him to be bombing on a little bit, but that will probably leave us reasonably exposed with two centre halves at, at the back. We don't really play with a sitting midfielder the way we did last season. I mean last season we had Yukoslu in there. It it tends to be Moat picking the ball up from from a deeper position and getting at our attack started. Swift if he plays is normally it, it, it picking the ball up a little bit deeper as well. Um Ratchet who's I, I would Definitely expect him to play because, again, with the height you guys have got, he's six foot five. Um, so I would think he will play in central midfield. He's seen, he seems to be just starting to adapt to the championship. We've got him um, on loan from Sassuolo uh, in in Italy. Um, he's formerly played for Valencia, Braga. He's you know played in some decent teams and uh, was on Man United's radar apparently a few years back when they were getting rid of Vidic. So he's a quality player. Um, the, the the midfield will be fairly fluid. Mo will be the one starting attacks, but um, in terms of getting up and Maja will drop into a 10 and that will invite the wide men to get beyond um Maja and that they they're usually our more advanced players. I would I wouldn't expect the two wide men to be the ones that started on Saturday. I think he'll probably leave both out. I think he'll go back to Fellows and Grant, which was which was the tried and tested at the start of the season. Um, and for me, uh, I, uh, Grant hasn't had a bad game yet this season. Um, Fellows, I think, has become a bit of a marked man and he's struggling a bit with that, to be honest with you. But given that you've got um, no Alfie Doty on that side... I would very much like to see Tom Fellows start. Yeah, it's an interesting one because right now, like when asked about it in the, the the BBC Three Counties radio interview, Simon Oxley asked Rob Edwards, 
with Doughty and Holmes both suspended. Holmes was like a backup, backup defender. You know, we have a severe defensive injury crisis right now and also two players suspended. He asked Rob Edwards, so what are you going to do for the next match? And he was like, God knows. He literally doesn't know how we're going to line up at the back. And it's it's really very concerning. Um, but let's talk about some of your danger men then. So as well as um, you mentioned the, the effect that Carlos Corbrand's had on Carlin Grant, another player that I think I've identified from the West Brom team, and you, you can correct me if I'm completely wrong, because I don't watch you week in, week out. I just watch the highlights packages and stuff every week. Alex Moat, he's a player that had dipped out. He was sent out on loan. And now, like, he's sort of recovering that form that he had when he was, um, oh, where was he? Was he at Barnsley, I think? And uh, as well as Callum Styles as well, who's an odd one as well, because playing him at left back, I remember him from when we were mixing it with Barnsley as a left-sided midfielder. Yes, versatile, but... You know, definitely not a, a defender by any stretch. No, I mean, first, first of all, it's um, I think I think Griff, call, saying that we've got any danger men when we've uh, when we failed to score in four of our last five games is um, is is slightly ironic. But um, no, I mean, look, I, 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 you know, we have got some good players. Um, uh, this this run of not scoring is concerning. It has to be said, and it's become an enormous sense of frustration for the fans it is worth saying like I say that we've probably posted enough xg in all of those four games where we haven't scored to have scored at least one goal probably should have scored a couple against Cardiff and um, uh, and Middlesbrough so uh, I I think that there is I, I we are creating chances not as many as we should be but we are creating some chances Alex Mo it's class I mean he is he is everything to what we do he is he if if we were an NFL team he'd be our quarterback that you know that's 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 what he is he's the one he's the one who starts the plays he's the one who 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 sets everybody in position he's the one who moves the ball he dictates everything from the uh, from uh, he he picks the ball up from the back and he he just he moves the ball through the thirds for us he's he's a phenomenal footballer and he's got a shot on him as well he has got a shot on him. He, does, to be honest, we haven't. I mean, he obviously scored the two goals at Portsmouth. We haven't. We haven't actually seen enough of that for me from uh, from Alex Mowat since he came to the Albion. He, he he actually he scored a couple of really really big goals for us um, the first season he was at the club when when he was there under um, uh, 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 under Valerian Ishmael. But I mean, he, he uh, and then as you quite rightly say, he he just his face didn't fit for whatever reason um, on, under Steve Bruce. I don't know whether it was a there was an element of Moat was very much Ishmael's man, and Bruce didn't really didn't really fancy him for for whatever reason. But he actually he actually only scored two goals last season. Both of them were against Preston. One was away, one was at home. The the one away was a really it was a quite scrappy effort where somehow the Preston player managed to play it back to him. And the one at home was a penalty. So we actually haven't, uh, you know, up until that Portsmouth game, we haven't seen a lot of the, uh, the wonderful Alex Mowat thunderous finishing, but uh, fortunately he's managed to do a little bit of that for us this season. But I, I think uh, it, it's, it's one of those things, isn't it? You bring in players with this reputation for thumping goals in from distance. We did this with Adam Reach and then never saw it. <laughs> Um, fortunately, we've seen it a bit more from Moe, but in all fairness, like putting aside his finishing, which at times is, you know, is unbelievable when the ball drops for him. He, it, what, what he brings to this side is, it's so valuable. It's so valuable. Like I say, we, we quite literally can't play without him he he, he didn't it, it, the, the one the one game where we've got absolutely battered was the first half against Sheffield Wednesday which is the only 45 minutes of football he hasn't played this season and that tells you everything that you that you need to know really well we haven't even talked about Jonathan Swift so he's one that's really impressed me because he was incredible when he was at Reading and I thought signing Jonathan Swift on a three was fantastic business from West Brom it really was. And then there's Jed Wallace, who was a player that I would love to see play at Luton. 
But for some reason, he's sort of being phased out of West Brom to some extent. Well, uh, I don't know as... I don't know if he's been phased out. I mean, yeah. You, uh, interestingly, you were linked with uh, with Wallace quite heavily at yeah, the end of end of the last exactly year. right. Um, and and to be honest, to, for me, it made it was it, it was something that made a lot of sense because um, Jed was never going to play a lot this season um, unless Tom Fellows got injured, and he hasn't been phased out. He's just unfortunately for him, he's got probably the, one of the best young players in the division ahead of him. You know that that's that's just what it is. Tom Fellows was a player that Premier League teams offered fifteen million pounds for in in the summer. He's not going to get left out a lot. It it, it just it just is what it is with uh, with Tom Fellows and um, Jed's just a little bit unfortunate that somebody's come through and 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 is just a phenomenal talent. It's not because Jed's not good enough. Um, I think one of the problems that Jed has, which is why a move to Luton made a lot of sense to me is that what Jed's real strength is a bit like, you know, the, uh, no, I'm not going to go as far as to say it's Beckham-esque, but, um, but a bit like no. David Beckham could or, or Chris he Brunn could in the past. He can whip a ball in. Yeah, yeah he can from whip anywhere, a ball though. in. He doesn't yeah. have to go past his man to put a ball in the box. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it, it's, it's something we saw for years and years with Chrissy Brunt for us he never he didn't have to beat his man to put a wonderful ball into the box and Jed's got that ability the problem is at the moment he's got no one to aim for really Masha a little bit is more of a presence in that sense than Brandon Thomas Asante was last season but he's still not Daryl DK and I think it's a big big shame that 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 Jed hasn't had a period a real real sustained period of Daryl DK in the middle and Jed being able to put balls in towards him because I think that could be a that could be a real combination. But you know we'll we'll see. DK, I know he's had a little hamstring setback, but we're, we're hopeful of seeing him in a few weeks' time, um, and we hope he can stay fit this time. But uh, no, I mean uh, John. Going back to John Swift. He, he he splits opinion of the Albion fans. I, I I really like John Swift. He's been asked to do something a bit different this season. Um, uh, he's been he's been asked to pick the ball up deeper. He's been asked to because last season teams worked out that if you stop Mowat, you stop Albion. Um, so Corbrand's solution to that problem was well, if I put Mowat and Swift in there picking the ball up off the back four, unless you commit a lot of players to to the press it's really hard to stop both of them so that's what that's what swift has been doing and actually people see him as a number 10 actually it's people like ratchet and malumbi who've been the ones further up the field a lot of the time or or dean garner in that position in that in that 10 role it hasn't really been swift um, he was much further forward against cardiff but, but but generally speaking this season he's been he's been a bit deeper i've I've been impressed with his performances. One of the problems with John Swift at the moment is he has zero confidence in front of goal. He hasn't scored an open play goal since February. um, And you can tell he missed a massive chance against Cardiff. Uh, He just, he didn't, he did, as I say, there was two things he could have done, either take the shot early or go around the goalkeeper. And he didn't do either of them. He just kind of, he saw the keeper descending upon him, upon him and panicked um, and just shot, which, which happens when, you know, when, when you're what, eight months without a goal, it happens. But yeah. And and look, we've only had four different players score for us this season. Um, Maja, Moat, Grant and Malumbi. We've got loads of players who you have to go back to March and April for their last goal. So we've got we've got a lot of players who are really, really low on confidence in front of goal. And that's kind of that that's contributing quite heavily, I think, at the moment to the total and utter lack of goals that you're seeing in our games. Well, it'll be an interesting one. As I said to you before off air and also in WhatsApp. Luton could just be the tonic that West Brom have needed. But let's talk about the game. And also, you've uh, agreed to appear in our Sluga Six Prediction League. So you'll be playing on this week on behalf of the Opposition Podcast. Uh, essentially, it's a fun little thing that we do. It's a predictor league. Uh, the four main pod hosts and the Opposition Podcast. Um, we all predict six games. And I sent... All of them to you. The only one we're going to discuss today 
um, is the Luton West Brom game that's going to happen on Friday night. And essentially, whoever wins the prediction league, they get to donate £50 to a charity of their choice. The opposition pods, if they win, the money gets donated to the food bank, Luton Food Bank. So, how are we doing, by the way? Um, you're third. I'm second. Uh, Beefy from our pod is first. So, you know, got to step it up. <laughs> um, but the, the, the game we're going to discuss, Luton West Brom is actually worth double points. So if you get a direct hit, that can bootstrap the the opposition pods into first place. But we'll have to see. So where do you sit on this game on Friday night? I mean, look, you know, it's it's going to be difficult when I come to doing my actual predictions because because effectively, especially when you when you when you're putting charity money on it, it's um it, it it's whether it's whether I let my heart or my head rule. To be honest with you, um, I I think I think the reality is, ask anybody uh, anybody who supports a team who haven't won in the last six and uh, and have failed have failed to score in uh, in four of those six games whether they feel confident against anyone because they won't they just won't like i uh, i don't think we're playing particularly badly um and it is worth mentioning that uh, that that you know we haven't scored in in four of the last six. We have kept clean sheets in three of those last uh, three of those four games that we haven't scored in. We've had three nil nils, so we have been pretty solid at the back. But then again, all the players that have kept us solid are injured. So you know we've lost Bartley, we've lost the Jai, we've uh, we you know we we we. I'm loving this. Um, <laughs> so keep going. I'm almost there. But yeah, well, <laughs> this is it, and it, I, I I don't know. I still think Carlos Corbran will have a set up to be fairly yeah. solid, but of course the, he will. <laughs> the losing height against mm-hmm. you guys worries me. That that's what. That, to be honest, if we were playing, if we were playing somebody with. With, without the kind of threats that you guys have got, you know, if we if we were playing someone like, for example, Burnley, um, who who've got, you know, who who who, who you know are going to keep it, keep it on the floor and uh, and and are not going to put two big men up front or anything like that, I'd I'd probably feel all right about a back four of um, Furlong, Holgate, Hegem, and Styles because it's not a bad back four by any stretch of the imagination. My big concern against against you guys is that Holgate's not the tallest centre half in in, in, the, in the league. Um, Furlong is a, quite a tall right back with a very good leap, so there's that. But Styles certainly is not an aerial threat in any way, shape, or form. It's a lot of work for Hegem to do to deal with both Morris and Adabajo. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm very worried. I'm very worried about that, and I, I do think. I'm glad Alfie Doherty's not there putting the balls in. I really am because I think, you know, I think if he was, I think we could get absolutely murdered, to be honest with you. Um, I think that there's going to be a lot of emphasis on Ratchet just going to have to work hard and get back in there and give us another body in there as well. Um, Or he's going to have to put some faith in Frobotta at left back, who actually is six foot, you know, and, uh, and, and can, and can offer a bit of aerial presence I, I personally would, don't really want to see Callum Styles play um, on Friday night. That's nothing against Callum Styles. I just don't want to see a little little, little left back. I just don't. Um, and look, at the moment, we're not in a situation where, like Coventry did at the weekend, that we can that, that we can go two 0 down against you and think, okay, we can fire our way back into this game. Because you know we've we, we've we've scored we've scored one goal in the last five games. You know, it, it, I, I can't I can't feel good about it. I just can't. But I do think Corbran will keep the game as tight as he possibly can. But I think if you get one nil up, I think your fans will really get off their seats. I think you'll get that Kenilworth Road atmosphere uh, going again. And we all know what Kenilworth Road can be like under the lights. And I, uh, I think he, I think the first goal could be massive because I think if I think if we were to nick it early doors, I, you know you're 22nd in the league. I think I think the fans turn a bit. So um, I think it's pivotal whoever whoever scores first, and uh, I hope we we get a hot start because I think if we if we score if we score first, 
then the fans turn a bit on the players and then it's down to have the players got the character to deal with that. And they haven't exactly shown this season that they have. Yeah, it's going to be a really tough one. So what's your score prediction then for this one? I mean, you know, my my, my heart would always uh, would, would always have, uh, have have an Albion win, but I don't know. I, I think we're going to get turned over, to be honest with you. Um, uh, I think... Uh, Probably two one Luton. To be honest, oh, I, I hope I don't, so. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not full of belief at the moment. I, you know, uh, um, I. It, it, as I say, if we had our usual back four, I'd probably, I'd probably have us down to pinch it one nil. I, I think. We, I think we could do. A, we could do a job on you with our usual back four, but with without the height that we've lost, we've lost three massive blokes from our from our back line in the last week. I don't know. I just, I, I just honestly, I've, got, I've gone through it in my head. I don't, I can't get my head around. I'm sure Carlos Corbran will have a plan, but that's why he gets paid the big bucks, and I don't. I, I sitting here right now, I can't tell you how we cope with Adebayo and Morris for ninety minutes. I just can't. Well, don't you worry. I'm sure they'll be taken off bang on sixty minutes, like they always are. <laughs> Look, Chris. Thank you very much for joining us. And, um, well, after Friday, best of luck for the rest of the season with the playoff push. <laughs> yeah, well, and keep, keep dropping points. It won't be much of a playoff push. But, yeah, no, I, look, I, I, all joking aside, Carlos Corbran will get it right. And, uh, yeah, we'll, 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 be, we'll be there or thereabouts. And do you know what? Honestly, I, um, I, I, as I said to you, I said to you on, uh, on WhatsApp, like, we saw this a couple uh, a couple of seasons ago when we were bottom of the league under, uh, under Steve Bruce and and we ended up getting within one result of the playoffs middlesbrough got the uh, got their act together a couple of games earlier than us and and ended up making the playoffs i uh, just because you're just because you're t- 22nd after after what are we 12 games into the season i i i i would still still happily have uh, have have a wager with anybody that Luton Town don't finish more than maximum six eight points outside the playoffs. I, I just uh, and that's if you don't make the, uh, and and that's if you don't get on a run and make them because it really doesn't take much for th- for things to turn around in this division and we we all know what a week of Championship football can uh, can can be like. It can it, it can flip completely on its head. Three three games in seven days. Like uh, pretty much next next week, you could be you you could be nine points better off and in a completely different position. Equally, so could we. We you know all our fans are moaning at the moment. We you know we we go and we go and turn over your good selves and uh, and, uh, and Burnley and Hull, and suddenly everything looks a bit rosier in the garden. So yeah, uh, 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 you know if you they want to get on the players' backs on Friday night, be my guest, but. Uh, <laughs> I personally and wouldn't be as worried as I'm sure many Luton fans are at the moment. I guess we'll see what happens. Thank you very much, Chris. My pleasure. So that was Chris Hall from Albion Analysis. And as you can hear, he is not confident in the slightest about this game. He thinks first goal wins it. And whoever scores first will go on to get a couple more we got to get behind the team. I know it's looking pretty bleak at the moment, but we're playing an Albion team that are ravaged with defensive injuries, just like us. And if we play two up top, Morris and Elijah, who knows? We could really test that back line. So everyone, be loud, be proud, get behind the team. We can do this. This could be the start of our season. As Chris said, anything can happen in the championship. There are teams that have gone from bottom and 20 seconds and, you know, had a playoff push at the end of it. You never know what's going to happen. But all that's left is, come on you hatters. <laughs>